If you have been watching, or even if you have been watching us on KTAR.com, uh, let me tell you, it's called What's It Like? And we ask questions that normally you would not ask a fellow citizen at a cocktail party. In this case, fellow citizens don't even get close to you at a cocktail party. How long were you teaching math? <laughs> I've got 20 years of math teaching experience here in Arizona. I'm getting a facial tick <laughs> even as we speak. Dr. Ted Coe from the Valley of the Sun, a part of the administration of Grand Canyon University. Why do people fear math? You know, I think it's because it, 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 it ends up being such a mess in their minds, and that's perhaps because it's being presented that way, you know, in the classroom. Just in Arizona or across America? Oh, it's all across America. We're not, we're not unique in that. All right, well, how can we get professors to make it more attractive? Well, we can do, we can do all kinds of things, but one thing to start with is let's, let's look at ways to, to work on the focus and the coherence in the mathematics that we're teaching. We don't want to just come out and teach a, a random thing every day. We want to make sure that it's tying to what happened the day before and it's going to lead into what happens on the next day. So, so rather than uh, uh, memorize this, memorize this, memorize this, let's make sense of this. Let's start with an idea, a core foundation, and let's watch that idea build from meanings all the way across the curriculum. That sounds like you're teaching logic. Oh, math is very logical. You know, and that's one of, one of the sort of ultimate ironies about the curriculum that we have right now in America is that, the, that while math is totally logical, it ends up being that the students see it as perhaps the least logical of, of, all, of, the, of all the disciplines by the time they finish. I'll tell you what worries me as a citizen. I just keep thinking that the United States and American public school students in particular are going to be falling so far behind that as close as they're going to get, is using spray paint on the side of a wall to do two plus two with the wrong answer. I mean, we really seem to be dreadful when it comes to the rest of the world. Well, I don't know if that's quite quite the case, if it's that extreme, but you know, we, we tend to aggregate uh, our, our, our student reports, if you will, in, in, in a much larger pool. We don't have such a, a homogenous population, right? That uh, some of the other countries might have when they're reporting. Everybody in Finland countries. looks alike, but not yeah. here. Right. So that really makes that much of a difference? I think, it, I think it has an impact on the kinds of things that we hear. Talk to me about right and left brain. I, <laughs> I was the guy who gravitated in school to uh, the English literature and plays and the arts and that kind of thing. And algebra, uh, right past the first X and I was lost. Mm -hmm. Is it a right and left brain thing? I don't think it has to be. You know, maybe some people have a, a greater affinity towards learning mathematics than others, just like any, just like any. Well, why do they? I, I think we're just, you know, this is an ongoing nature versus nurture kind of issue, but I, it, we don't have an answer to that. But uh, what we do know is that we can do a better job teaching the mathematics that we're teaching to appeal to whatever sort of learning styles the individuals have. So you don't buy the right brain, left brain concept? I don't think that it's nearly as clean as that. Why should I even bother? No. I'm, I'm history. That's unfortunate at my age to say, but <laughs> I'm. So I'm when it was pre-calculus, I was in a, <laughs> right. The cave paintings. I probably am not going to change a great deal. My children, they have children. What about those grandchildren? Why should they learn math as I learned it uh, by rote? when they have all of the technology that does the work for them. Well, and you know, this, this presents an interesting sort of dilemma. When, I hope so. When, 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 you look at, when you look at, say, the mathematics that uh, the, the culture sends, tends to look at, they see mathematics as ways of doing things. And so we see a proliferation of these uh, technologies, like, say, the Khan Academy, which does a very good job oh. at showing students how to do things. But what, 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 where it falls short and the value added that the teacher needs to bring to the equation is to also show the teachers or show the students how to think about these things, how to build up these core understandings, and also to build the good habits, those sort of habits of thinking that would come alongside and help the students be better at the math. So you're saying to mom and dad then, don't let the computer and the calculator and all the machines do the work? Don't do all the work, right? I mean, so there's still, there is, there is still about the mathematics, there, there is the, the, 
the fluency that needs to be there on the, on the part of the students. They need to understand and be able to do the computations, but those, those computations and skills should be growing out of ways of thinking, not totally devoid of them. Sitting of here on this program, on KTAR.com, mm -hmm. you have made history here today because you are the first math professor I have ever met that I understood. It can happen in your life, too. What's it like sitting and talking to a math professor? Hey, this time it's been fun on KTAR.com.